Being Jewish in World War II was hard enough. If you were mere infantry and the Axis had any inkling that you were of Jewish descendancy, you could kiss your chances of a normal POW life goodbye, as they would be sending you to the nearest concentration camp for processing. But imagine being a Jewish commando fighting against the Germans in espionage missions and getting captured. This was the life of Hungarian-born Lanyi Dury, later known as George Lane, who despite being a Jewish commando for the British Army and getting captured, somehow survived against all odds. This is his story. Just before we get into the nitty gritty of the video, it's worth noting that in addition to being a Jew, being a commando was also despised and almost certain to be shot if found out. This was due to the German order mandating all commandos, no matter what race, were to be shot without trial in an attempt to deter the devastating guerrilla attacks they wreaked on German positions. Born on January 18, 1915 in Hungary, Dury moved to London in 1935 to study when the Second World War broke out. He decided to join the famed British Special Operations Executive, where he quickly became adept at unarmed combat, weapons and explosives, as well as parachuting and small boat handling, all of which would serve him well as a commando. Dury, now known as Lane, was drafted into Commando Troop No. 3, also known as the X Troop, where most of its members were Jews from different European countries who spoke perfect German. These men, like most commandos, were also required to adopt false British personnel history to help them in the event of capture. In preparation for the Allied D-Day, Lane and some of his troop were sent to scout German mines aimed to destroy masses of landing craft. After what seemed to be quite a routine mission on May 17th of 1944, Lane reported his findings back to HQ, where he stated the mines were not waterproof and were very old and corroded, making them less effective. His reports were not believed, and he was sent in the next night, and then the next, to gather more intelligence for the British Army. On his third night, however, his luck had evidently ran out, and German patrol boats spotted the commandos, managing to cut off Lane and another man from the rest of the group. Although the rest of the group made their getaway, Lane and his fellow commando Roy Wooldridge were forced to abandon all their photographic equipment and then surrender to the incoming German patrol boats that had circled in on them. Feigning ignorance from the beginning, the commandos pretended not to know a word of German, all whilst listening to their captors talk about possible execution for these suspected commandos. Lane was then the next day put blindfolded into a car where he thought he would meet his end on the French countryside. This, however, was far from the case, and Lane was rather requested by Erwin Rommel himself for tea. Initially, the men went back and forth in a polite cadence, with Lane pretending not to know a word of German and putting on a Welsh accent to disguise his Hungarian one. After a back and forth and Rommel hinting toward his suspicion of Lane being a commando, the two men moved off the subject and had a long conversation. Lane was obviously bewildered, but somehow he avoided the fate of a commando and through his ingenious Welsh disguise escaped suspicion as a Jew as well. Not that Rommel necessarily cared for Hitler's anti-Semitism. Although the Gestapo transferred Lane and his friend to Fresnes prison in Paris and stated they were to be shot or hanged, they were mysteriously transferred away from the Gestapo torture chamber two days later and moved to a castle prison filled with 300 British officers. They had somehow been spared. It is unknown why or how, but some think it's to do with the mysterious tea lunch Lane had with Rommel. Perhaps Rommel liked the men so much that he dismissed his officer's opinions and ordered Lane and his friend to be treated as officer POWs. We'll never really know. Regardless, Lane survived the rest of the war, eventually escaping his captors when they evacuated the castle under guard due to the approaching American forces. Lane made it back to Allied lines and then got a ride into Paris where he stayed with his brother-in-law and learned to enjoy all the simple pleasures of life again. Up until his death in 2010 at the ripe old age of 95, Lane always thought back to that invitation from Rommel and the delightful conversation the men had together. He firmly believed that it was a Rommel who saved him and his fellow soldiers life and looked back fondly on the German general. I personally believe Rommel was one of the smartest and most innovative German generals of the war. 
I don't believe it was really any sort of luck that saved Lane. Rather, in my opinion, I think Roman knew Nazi high command were idiots and this was his way of striking back, by using his position of power to allow for random acts of compassion. It seems he also enjoyed his conversation with the intelligent Lane, which would have likely further influenced Rommel to order against his execution. And just before you go, make sure you check out my Patreon as this channel is usually demonetized and I do have a couple of great rewards coming up and I've got big plans for the channel guys. So I want to thank my current Patreons, Liam Richardson and Charlie Cousins for their continued support and I want to thank anybody who's even considering donating. Anyways guys, as always, thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new.